Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness where we look at all things personal finance. I recently filled in my tax returns for the very first time. Way! So in today's video I'll be sharing with you the five things I learned while doing my tax returns. Things I'll be covering are how claiming expenses works, using the rent a room and property allowances in conjunction with one another, and another tax expense that I didn't consider before going into this. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Matters, helping you be better with your money. Pow. So the self-assessment deadline has now passed, which normally occurs on the 31st of January for the tax year that took place before the current one. We are currently in the tax year 23-24, so the deadline that just passed was for the tax year before that. 22 to 23. Over the past couple of years, me and my partner have been exploring ways to bring in additional income streams on top of our full-time jobs through various side hustles. And when I do look back at where we are now to where we started on our financial journey, I am super proud of ourselves. It's always good to have some kind of self-reflection and recognition, don't you think? In terms of our side hustle incomes, we have the following. So number one is income from our Airbnb that we earn from renting out an annexed building in our garden. Number two is income from our lodger who rents a bedroom in our main house. Number three is income earned from this very YouTube channel, which also needs to be declared. And while we're on that, why don't you declare some love by uh, hitting that subscribe button? And number four, and you're probably not aware of this, but I also teach a Zumba class at my local gym two times a week. And the income I earn from this, again, needs to be declared. Now we did have some of these side hustles in place in the tax year before this one, but the government do provide you with some allowances such as the rent a room allowance, property and trading allowances, which we previously utilized. And because the income we earned in our very first year never surpassed those allowances, we therefore did not have to declare it in our self-assessment. If you want to learn more about side hustles and taxes, check out this video here. So that is how the current situation stands at the moment. And to be honest with you, our original plan was not to do the self-assessment ourselves, but instead hire an accountant to do it on our behalf. A popular route that many people obviously decide to do, and with good reason, filling out the self-assessment form isn't the easiest thing to do. However, after a failed attempt at hiring one, the accountant basically ghosted us, uh, and instead of following up on another professional, the conversations that I kind of had with the accountant kind of led me to believe that my tax situation wasn't the most complex. So I thought, why not have a stab at it and try it for myself? And that's exactly what I did. Now, before going any further, I'm not claiming to be a tax expert of any kind, but if you are someone with a similar setup to me, then with some time and effort, you too can get a decent enough grasp of the rules and learn how it mostly works, just like I did. Now, the original idea for this video was that I was going to do a walkthrough on how to fill out the self-assessment form, but to be honest, there are so many nuances and options on the self-assessment form, which is very much tailored to each individual situation. So I thought going down that route probably wouldn't add much value. Plus there are loads of expert advice here on YouTube that would do it way better than I could ever. So I would highly suggest finding one of those amazing YouTubers if you really want to get in the nitty gritty detail of things. For property tax, I would highly recommend the channel tax to you Limited. They helped me out a lot, especially when it came to reporting my rental income. I'll put a link to their channel in the video down below. So let's crack on on what the five things that I learned whilst doing my self-assessment. So the first one is expenses. So claiming expenses can be really useful, especially when it comes to reducing the amount of taxable income you will be exposed to. So taking rental income as an example, expenses can be anything that was put towards the keeping and upkeep of that rental property, such as furniture, repairs, installation, etc., etc. However, what I didn't realize when filling out your form is that you don't actually need to provide evidence of your expenses, which I was fully expecting to do. Now, obviously, before going any further, I'm not suggesting that you should go ahead and lie and overinflate your expenses to bring down the amount of tax you'll be charged. HMRC obviously do do spot checks. And if you are ever called into one, you will need to be ready to provide that evidence. Looking at the government website, HMRC can write or phone in to say that they want to check your tax return records and may request a personal visit in person at your house office or even in their offices. So definitely keep all receipts and manage them accordingly. I have a receipt now where I keep track of any expenses that we have paid towards. And now I have even a folder for each tax year, which corresponds to an actual physical receipt. So I can't lose them. But yeah, when it comes to actually declaring your expenses on your form, you just need to provide a numbered figure in the form. And that is it. Now, the next one is the use of the rent a room scheme and property allowances. And if these can be used together. 
Now this one was a serious head scratcher as the wording on this is extremely vague and doesn't provide a clear answer on when exactly these can be used in conjunction with one another and when they cannot. It got to the point where I had to call HMRC and even they weren't sure. I had two follow-up calls with a specialist who then confirmed that my argument was indeed correct. So what is it that I'm actually talking about? So taking a step back, let's just quickly go through the two types of schemes. Both the rent a room and property schemes are two separate allowances that owners can utilize against their rental income. However, each has its own set of rules and guidelines. So the rent a room scheme lets you earn up to 7,500 pounds per year tax-free or 3,750 if you own the property jointly. Now the income has to come from letting out a furnished accommodation in your own home. So this is only applicable if you have someone renting out a room in your property that you also live in. So in my case, the income that I get from my lodger is applicable here. However, the income I get from the annex building in my garden, which I list on Airbnb, is not applicable. Because even though it is registered under the same address, it is separate from the main building and has its own facilities and private entrance. And guests who stay there do not have access to the main property. So the second allowance is the property allowance, which allows you to earn £1,000 each year tax-free on income from your property or land. If the property is shared, you both can claim this £1,000 allowance. It's not split like the rent a room scheme. There is one catch, and that is you cannot use it in conjunction with the income from letting a room in your own home that is also being utilised under the rent a room scheme. So the income that I get from my lodger could not be used against this allowance as I'm already claiming it under the rent a room scheme, which has a higher allowance. So obviously I'm going to be using that instead. But the question I had to HMRC was whether I could actually use this income generated by my annex building outside too. Now this took a fair bit of research because all the examples when it came to using the two allowances together would always refer to at least two properties. So the answer always came to be yes, but only when you were using the rent a room scheme on property one and using the property allowances on property two, where you were letting it out to a tenant, for example. But I couldn't find a clear answer if the second income was on an annex building, which in its own right is not applicable under the rent a room scheme, but is still considered part of the same property and land that you are utilizing the rent a room scheme on. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the answer to whether I could use both of them was yes. I was able to claim both allowances for my given situation. So even though I get two incomes from the same property, but because one of those incomes comes from a separate dwelling and it is not applicable under the rent a room scheme allowance, I was able to claim property allowances on that income too. The next thing I learned was that if you do end up being stuck on how to fill out your self-assessment form, and even after reading so many articles online or watching God knows how many YouTube videos, you can actually contact HMRC for some guidance. This is what I actually ended up doing to answer my tip too. I called them, presented them with my query, and honestly, I wasn't actually expecting much help from them. I thought they were going to refer me to a professional and be done with it. But I was actually generally surprised at how engaged they were. And although it did take a while, my question did end up getting answered and resolved. So when I first called, the first individual I actually spoke to who actually did some investigation, but he ended up not being sure what the correct answer was, he arranged for a follow-up call with a specialist to look into the matter and said that they would come back to me on Tuesday. Now this was Friday when I called and true to their word, I got a call back on Tuesday and my query was answered. Now obviously they can't help with advice on how to fill out your taxes in the most efficient way. That's what accountants are for. But if you are struggling to understand a policy or don't know how to fill out the form correctly, that's when they can help. It worked out really well for me and it's free. Now the next thing I learned now that I look back at this was really obvious, but honestly, I never even considered it. This tip is only applicable for those with student finance, which essentially is a student tax and the amount you pay is based on how much income you earn. So obviously, if you are now declaring your income is now higher, then student finance would like a piece of that cake too. So as well as paying additional taxes on self-assessment, you will also have to pay some additional funds to student finance. So even though it does sound really obvious now that I've gone through the process, when I was initially trying to work out how much I would roughly need to pay in taxes, I never once considered it as a factor. And when speaking to my partner and other friends, they never considered it too. So it is something to think about. Now, the last piece that I learned from self-assessment was that like with most things, it became easier with trial and error. 
So although the self-assessment form can come across as daunting, if you do take the time to fill out the form and check your calculations, which it does automatically for you, you will begin to become more familiar with how it works and how to fill it correctly. Because let me tell you, when I first filled out the form and inputted all my numbers, the amount of tax it said I had to pay at the end was almost three times what I had calculated on the side. So clearly I had ticked a few boxes wrong and put numbers where they didn't belong. But yeah, you can fill out the form as many times as possible and have it recalculate as much as you like. And you're not penalized or limited on doing that, which is really helpful if you are starting or it's your first time, just like it did for me. It is only once you are happy with the output and you are comfortable that you filled in the form correctly that you hit that submit button. But until then, use this as an opportunity to understand every aspect of the form and where you went wrong. And you may just surprise yourself. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. Did any of these learnings prove useful? Or do you have any of your own words of wisdom that you'd like to share in the comment section down below? Please do let me know. And remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Pow.